chapter. I may call on you, some of you, to leave and kind of help me speed along here. I got, for a Sunday night, I got quite a few scriptures, so bear with me. I don't want to rush, but I'll try not to keep you too long. That pot roast is smelling real good. Oh, amen. Amen. Yeah, it's smelling real good. They know how to shut me up. <laughs> to get that food smelling good, they shut me up. They went, we'll fix him, they said. <laughs> Go to Ephesians 4. We're going to read verses 20 through 32. We're we'll, going we'll read it all, and we're going to come back. Kind of chop it up a little bit. Before 20 through 32 says this, but ye have not so learned, learned Christ. If so be that ye have learned him, if you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful us, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away, lying, speak, every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Be ye angry, but sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole, steal no more. But rather let him labor with of his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, have forgiven. Amen. We're talking about the life of Christ, right? or our life in Christ. And there's a lot of football fans here, right? Yes. And, and I know there's probably more Browns fans here than, than, than Bengals fans, so I'm going to use the Browns. <laughs> but there's this Browns fan, and he had a really crummy seat. Maybe that one of them sucky seats way up. And looking with his binoculars, he spotted an empty seat on the 50-yard line. Thinking to himself, man, what a waste. So he made his way down to the empty seat. When he arrived at the seat, he asked the man sitting next to him, is this seat taken? The man replied, it was my wife's seat. She passed away. She was a big Browns fan. The other man replied, I'm so sorry to hear of your loss, sir. May I ask why you didn't give the ticket to a friend or a relative? <clears throat> the man replied, they're all at her funeral. Oh. <laughs> Ouch. That is a dedicated That is a dedicated Right? Is that a dedicated <laughs> Yeah, I didn't see that coming, did you? No. Usually, yeah, if you think I need to read it, you know I'm one of but I can't read it. But is that a dedicated fan? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, my wife should do it. That's right. We beat you up right after service. But what if we was like that? Amen. What if we put? Some people will put football first. Some people will put everything first. <coughs> but what if we was like this gentleman here? I know it's humorous, but what if we? What if Christ was was our what we entertained? What what if that's what attracted us? That was our entertainment. That was our sports entertainment. What if we was committed to Christ like this gentleman was committed to? Amen. Amen. Be something to think about with it. Amen. Some people are very dedicated football fans. It's, it's nothing wrong with football. Nothing wrong with that at all. But keep God first. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 5, just hold your place here. We're going to go back to 4. But Ephesians 5, 15 through 17 says this. <clears throat> See then that you walk circumspectly not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding that the will of the Lord is. Be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. 
Robert Lawyer wrote this. this. This was long ago. He said, William Law warned that the world is now a greater enemy to the Christian than it was in apostolic times. It is a greater enemy because it has greater power over Christians by its favors, riches, honors, rewards, and protection than it had by the fire and fury of its persecutors. It's, more, it's a more dangerous enemy by having lost, lost its appearance of being an enemy. A lot of things can grab our attention. And they're not as dangerous as we think they are, but if they've got our attention, they're dangerous. Mm -hmm. Amen? What he was saying was the world was all of its glitter and gold is our enemy. Now, that's a nice place to live because it looks good. we got the comfort and the luxuries we enjoy. But that's the point. It's dangerous. Too much money or materialism is a, is a detriment of our faith in Christ because we look too much at them and not at Him. Amen. Amen. We take our focus off of Him and we'll put it on the fads and the fancies of the world. Amen. Hold your place here if you go with me to 1 John. First John 2, verses 15 through 17. It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Now let me set the record straight before you get thinking I'm, I'm, I use football, I use that joke as a thing. That's not what I'm talking about. If football could be what I'm talking about, but that's not. I'm not getting on us guys for watching football. Those of you that's able to go to a game every now and then, I don't blame you. You know, and if you go to a table at 1 o'clock table game or 1 o'clock Cincinnati game, you're going to have to miss church. So if you get the opportunity to go to a game every now and then, I'm not browbeating you for going to a game every now and then. Okay? So let me set the record straight. That's not my intent. The point I'm trying to get is our life should be in Christ. But when the moment comes when we start going after those things and neglecting the will of God, then we need to be careful and we're on dangerous ground. Amen? Amen. The, what we just read in John, it says life in Christ means that we have to live in this world. We have to live in it, but we don't have to be controlled of it. Amen? Amen. Amen. What do we do then? Or how do we live? And, and if you go back to Ephesians, Paul tells us what we should do in our life of Christ. We put away the former life. We put away the former life. And I'm going to come back. I'm going to think about that. And I'm going to say something here that kind of gets you. We put on the new life. And we put down the devil. Amen? <coughs> Ephesians 4, verse 20 and 22 said this. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have learned him and have been taught by him as the truth is of Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Your former way of life. Now I want you to think about this because I'm going to tell a story. In a minute, okay? But your former life, the life that you put away, what was it like? Now, some of you all in your minds is, is, is in your mind saying, well, I did this, and I did this, and I did this. But there, there's a story that goes like this. A friend tells about a time in his life that even though he was a Christian, and even though he had been raised in the church, he would take off Sunday morning with his boat and beer and head to the lake. He would wait until the people were in the church so they wouldn't see him drive by the church going to Grand Lake. Now, there's a key word in there that probably jumped out at you. Beer. Okay? Some of you, I know, have had a battle with alcohol in the past, and some of you are sobriety, and, and don't, I'm not trying to steal that away from you at all, but I'm going somewhere with this. Okay? What was so bad about what he did? When we, when we go off and look at the Scripture, and we say, put off concerning the old man. The old man's dead. Put off. Don't, don't pick him up no more. Well, I quit drinking, so that means I can't pick that up no more. 
Or I quit doing this so I can't pick that up no more. And I'm not telling you to pick those things back up. By all means, I'm not. Leave them alone. Amen. Okay? But we often forget what the old man did. What was so wrong with what he did here? He grabbed his beer and he went to the lake to fish. Was fishing wrong? No. no. Was, was that one beer? If he had just one beer, was the one beer wrong? No. 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 What was wrong? He left God. He left God. He left God. Well, brother, I don't do none of that no more. I put on the old man. I don't do none of that no more. Do you ever Come not on. serve God? Come mm -hmm. on. Do you ever fall back in your old ways? Some of you never did no bad things. But you did a bad thing because you didn't serve God. Amen. How many of you picked that thing, that bad thing back up and not serve God? Amen. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dangerous, dangerous thing. The, the thing that he was guilty of, he was not giving God thanks for anything and every good thing in his life. He was not praising and praising the Lord. He was not seeking the Lord's will, but his own will. Now, once again, if you got an opportunity to go on a fishing trip every now and then, go. I'm not, I'm not proud of you. But the story is, this, this is something he did every Sunday. This is what he did. So he was putting this every Sunday. He was putting this. I'm not telling you if, if you if you got an opportunity to go somewhere or visit. I'm not proud of you. But it's like this. I used to have an old Pontiac, and I, to me it was it was a jewel. <laughs> but I was young, and I didn't really know. How, you know, I, as long as I put gas in it and go, that's all, that's all I know. I didn't know much about the maintenance part of it. Amen. But I, my Pontiac that I had, it would start missing. Start cutting out on me. And I, I wouldn't, I'd ignore it. I wouldn't address it. I just kept driving. When it start, you start missing and you start ignoring, guess what happens with those cars? They quit running. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So if you got a little miss, if you don't address that little miss, it's going to turn into something that doesn't run. Amen. Amen. Turn on the Romans 8. Hold your place for your business. We're going to come back. Verses 12 through 14 is what I want. Therefore, brother, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you live through the Spirit, you mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Chuck, that's hard. Chuck ain't saying that. Paul's saying that. Amen? Amen. Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, under the inspiration of Jesus Christ, wrote that the Romans. Wrote that to the Romans. I want you to think about that. We're not Romans, but in a sense we are Romans. If you go back there, the Romans, they kind of had it all. We kind of got it all today. If we start serving the flesh, doing the things we want to do, yes. it's, it's, a, it's a bad thing. It, God doesn't like it. Amen. God does not like it. Amen. When we say we put away the former life, I know that Sister Mary and, and Dewey, correct me, I'm 29 years since for you. Amen. 29 years sobriety for Sister Mary. Give her a hand. Amen. How many of you doing it? Same thing. Same thing. 29 years. 29 years that they've been so. They might often think, well, I, I put off the old man. I, 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 I'm, I'm a new creature in Christ. I don't pick that up no more. But guess what they do? When they lay down on God, they're putting them back on Amen. that. Amen. Back on that. That's true. That old man. Amen. That's the truth. Yeah. Well, I don't do this and I don't do that. Do you do the biggest sin of all? And that's leave God out. Ouch. Amen. Okay. Amen. Go back to the Ephesians. 23 to 25 says so we need to put on a new life. Amen. It says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, wherefore putting away 
Put away lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry. You can be angry, but guess what? Sin not. <coughs> Let not the sun go down and rise. Neither give place to the devil. And I read more than what I told you this already there. The point is, put on your newer and better self. Amen? Amen. A lot of times people would tell me, you look nice today, Chuck. Mm. <laughs> you, ever, you ever have to make tell you, well, you clean up pretty good. <laughs> so people would tell me that. I started wearing these blazers about, here about four weeks ago. <laughs> Trying to look the part. <laughs> went pro on What pro when I do? He said I went pro on it. <laughs> but somebody often tell me, man, you look nice today. But guess what? I can't take no credit. Because my wife dresses me. <laughs> <laughs> we don't put them on me, but you tell me what you lay them out. <laughs> she don't now, she doesn't finish me dress me, but she lays them out. <laughs> She says, what you want to wear? I said, whatever you think. Listen to that. So she'll bring me something and I put it on. But when, she, when I'm told that you look nice today, I can't take credit. When we're told that you clean up nice, think about this. We clean up nice. Who cleans it up better than anybody? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Amen. We, and we can't we take no credit. We want to get big eyed, and when we do get cleaned up, we want to get all the big eyes. I take all the credit. You ain't done nothing. I can't take no credit for living good while my wife dressing me. We can't take no credit for being holy. Our Lord work that makes us holy. Amen. 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 He's the one that gives us the strength. Mm. Amen. <coughs> I like to think my wife has a good taste. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sis. <laughs> I want to talk about the clothes. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> but God has good taste, too. Amen. Amen. God has good taste, too. There's two good ways. I'm, I'm, I'm going to shut up. There's two good ways for us to put on this new life. One is by imitating others. And obviously the other is to imitate Christ. If you go to 1 Corinthians 11. Say 111. 1 Corinthians 11, yes. This was Paul writing to the Corinthian church. He said, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. And if we could imitate Paul, Paul said, Look, imitate me, even as I. That's the key. Here's the key of remembering and imitating others. Make sure who they're following. Make sure the life they're living. Amen. <clears throat> Be you followers of me, even as I am also of Christ. The best way, though, that to look good is to let Christ dress you. Amen? Amen? Is to imitate Him. If you go to Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2 says this. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of wounds, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do us so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher, for, finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and set it down at the right hand of the throne of God. Look to Jesus. Amen. He's our author. He's our, he's our author and finisher. He's, he's the one. He's the main dude. It's good to look to Paul. It's good to look to Chuck. But the person you make, need to make sure you're looking at is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Go back 